Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I hope you've all been able to have an absolutely brilliant Christmas. Um, and speaking of Christmas, that is indeed sort of the subject of today's Sudoku. It's called Shikaku Sudoku. And this has been sent to me by Codec, no less. Not because it's by Codec, it's actually by Codex Secret Santa, who I happen to know is Shy. Now Shy, if you're familiar with the channel, you will know that Shy is one of the world's greatest constructors. Uh, she is an absolute genius and Codec was so blown away by getting this as his Secret Santa present, he sent it straight into us saying it's a masterpiece. So, you know, you basically, there, there can be no greater praise. And it did strike me actually as a rather wonderful thing, uh, a Sudoku Secret Santa because it doesn't really have the nature of a normal Christmas gift. A normal Christmas gift, you know, you give somebody a computer game or, I don't know, some perfume or something, and it can only really be used and enjoyed by that one person. Whereas a Sudoku like these that have been flying around Discord recently, not only does the recipient get a great deal of pleasure out of them, but, you know, everyone else gets to see them as well. And especially if they appear in a video, now hopefully thousands of people will enjoy this Christmas creation from Shy, and that really that struck me as quite a poignant and special thing. So I'm looking forward to having a go at this. It's got a really cool and weird rule set. But before we do, we need to talk a bit about Patreon, don't we? Because many of you seem to have spent most of your Christmases solving Sudokus. So this is, of course, the um, the pyramid puzzle hunt that we've been talking about for the last week or so on the channel. An incredible creation from Peter Venus, from Aspartagus and Panthera. The feedback has been absolutely stellar, as you'd expect. Um, and it's even prompted some of you. Well, look, at, look at this. Somebody was mapping out their route through the pyramid using Minecraft. So there, there you go. If you know about Minecraft, this will make sense to you. If you're like me and you don't, well, it still looks rather cool. Um, anyway, uh, many of you, as I say, have been correctly completing it. If, if I don't read your name out here and you think you have completed the hunt, please go back to your last. It's just going to be that last six letter word that you've got wrong and just have a think about that. It's nothing too cryptic um, and you definitely should be able to figure it out if you're familiar with the channel at all. Anyway, here we go. Uh, well done to Mark Willis, to Carl Cloden, to Jim Davis, Shui Wu, RJ White, Mew Rocks, Abid Hawila, Kevin Hielden, John Gemmel, Trevor Tao, Luke Bovard, Chris Eli, Alfredo Gliotti, Harrison Stein, Grufty, and Peyton Lee. That is magnificent solving from all of you. And you may be wondering what we're going to do for our January reward. This was our Christmas gift um, uh, to patrons of the channel. Well, what are patrons going to be getting at the 1st of January? Well, I'll give you a little teaser, shall I? This is the first puzzle of a new puzzle hunt that we will be putting out on the 1st, uh, on the 1st of January. Um, I'll just read the flavour text because I love it so much. Dear George, I would be happy to assemble the cantina set for you. I have attached a working drawing of what the floor plan would look like. A few small points. One, I believe you can get everything you need with only a few camera setups. Are you sure you want to film in Super 8? My diagram also includes the positions of the actors. I've used colours to represent the same character's position in the two shots. Your copy boy seems to have spilled coffee on the script you sent. There are a few parts that we can't make out. And then you can see some some of the script has been obscured. Something thousand. We could almost buy our own ship for that. <laughs> this little isn't worth the effort. Come, let me buy you something. I'm sure some of you will be familiar with what the likely theme is of this hunt. It's uh, it's by Peter C. Hayward, and it is as imaginative as you would expect from Peter. Um, <laughs> it's little short of extraordinary, and it's coming very soon. Anyway, let's get back to actually trying to do Chicago Sudoku, shall we? What are the rules of Shai's puzzle? We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Circled clues must belong to a killer cage that is rectangular in shape and sums to the total in the circle if given. Okay, so I think most circles are given with the exception of this one perhaps in the middle. 
Um, okay, let me just uh, without containing a repeated digit. Okay, so it's it's basically we've got to build killer cages from the circles, except with the modification that all of the circle, all of the cages we build have to be rectangular. There must be exactly one circle per cage and the entire grid must be filled by the, oh, the entire grid must be filled by these cages. Cages cannot overlap. And that's all we get. We'll do have a go. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I have one thought immediately here, but I'm just let me think about this for a second because I'm just wondering, normally in a killer cage, the sort of the, the clue number always appears in the top left of the cage. But because this whole grid is got to be caged effectively, this cell can never be, you know, it's not a circled cell. So we must be able to bend the rules of normal killer Sudoku slightly. And that's probably by why the rules don't refer, don't say normal killer Sudoku rules apply. They sort of just refer to a killer cage that is rectangular in shape. Yeah, because something is going to have to pick up this cell. There's going to have to be a rectangle that moves into the top left corner. Um, now, I'll tell you my mad idea to start with. Well, it's not really mad, but I, I can definitely work out the value of this circle. Because, of course, uh, because, of, well, really, it's an extrapolation of the secret. And the secret is only something I tell my favourite people. But it is Christmas time. And I'm sure you're here for a very good reason. So I think you might be among my favourite people. And the secret is the following. In any complete row or complete column or complete box of a Sudoku, you'll find the digits one to nine once each because of the rules of Sudoku. Now, if you add up the digits one to nine, you get 45. And that means that 45, that's the secret by the way, is of course interesting in the context of an entire Sudoku grid because an entire Sudoku grid therefore sums to 45 which is one row times 9 because there are 9 rows and 45 times 9 is 405. Now given this entire grid is caged I can add up all of these digits and work out the difference between them and 405 and that will be the value of this cell. And the problem with going through all this is I now have to do that because otherwise it will annoy me that I haven't. So let's do this slowly. 65, 91, 99, 139, uh, 14, uh, what was I say? Hang on, what did I say? 139, didn't I? So that's 147, <laughs> uh, 157, 165, 195, uh, 222, 222, all the twos there. Uh, so that's 260, 283, 284, 324, 348, uh, 368, 374, 398, I think. 398. And what did I say? Four oh, so 405 minus 398 is 7. So this clue which is missing is a 7. And that's, oh, okay, well, that is actually rather beautiful because what I cannot do, therefore, is join that this cell here in a rectangle with any of those three digits because then this cell will either have to be a minus two, a minus one, or a zero, all of which are impossible digits. So this is going to have to join the six. Uh, let's do it like that. And it's that cell is going to have to be a one. So now we've actually got a digit in the grid. It is not a five in the middle, which is what it tends to be in these exotic Sudokus. It's a one in the middle. Um, and I guess those squares now are sort of two, three, four, and five in some order. Now I do love the logic problem Shikaku. Normally, the way to approach it is to well, yeah, normally the way to approach it is you don't get clues which are killer cages. Obviously, you get clues which are the total number of cells in the rectangle. Which we haven't got here. So it's a bit hard to see which of these rectangles is likely to be very tricky. That square is interesting, though, straight away. Because that's a 26. 
So that rectangle cannot be vertical, because the maximum size of vertical rectangle would be a one, well, a three by one or a one by three, depending on how you like to matricize your <laughs> your cells. Um, and obviously, three cells, especially not if one of them is a six, but anyway, three cells in a Sudoku, if the numbers are different, cannot add up um, to twenty six. So that means this has got to come out at least to here. Ah, ah, but we don't know what it does after that. It could be four cells in a line, or it could be a two by two, which is ambiguity we don't need. That cell, though, is now trapped in. Right, so the 28 is a horizontal... Ah, ah, the 28 is a horizontal clue. But also this square, this cell in the top left-hand corner now can't be part of the 26. Because if it was, in order to make it rectangular, you'd have to have two clues in an area. And we're told that's not allowed. So this must join to the 28. Uh, and that's going to be at least a four cell region. So we've got to come at least this far. Uh, but actually, no, I was just wondering if we could get to cells like this. And we absolutely can. Um, 28, 37. Th right, the 37 in row one now cannot be a horizontal clue. Oh, well, it can't be a, only a horizontal clue. It can't be a sort of one cell wide horizontal clue because the maximum I could make those five digits add up to is five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine, which is only 35. So this must poke downwards. Oh, I see, but it could just go straight. Ah, okay, it could just go straight downwards. So sorry, I was, I was wondering if I was going to therefore know it was sort of this shape. I don't think that I do. The f ah, but we are starting to pen some of these clues in. This 40 clue definitely can't be just a strip down column 9. Again, that would only add up to a maximum of 35. So this has got to poke out. And I can see that that's doing something rather beautiful because it's locking off the top, this to this domino. This, ca this domino can't be part of the 37 because that 37, however I therefore draw it after that, will not be rectangular. So this must be part of the yellow region. And it's not big enough at size only four cells to add up to 40, so it's got to extend a bit. Ah, yeah, it's still not big enough. Six cells is six different numbers. The maximum you'll get to is 39. Um, so it's still got to go further and now it can't it can't go anymore because if it extended another two cells it would be a 10 cell region and given every digit in it has to be a different digit that's a problem so i think this is now done this 40 shape ah and now we can use the secret on it to say there is no five in that region because it's eight cells all different digits that only sum to 40. So the missing digit is going to take us up to the count of 45. If this had been a nine cell cage, it would have added to 45. So this must this must be missing a five. And in this box, therefore, there must be a five in one of those three cells. Um, okay. Uh, now, what else can we do here? Probably... Ah, okay, we can, I think we've got symmetrical logic at the bottom. Look, that square, yeah, this 26 also can't be a vertical strip. It could never get big enough. So those two squares are the same. I'm going to make those the same color as this. On the basis, I can't think that these two regions are ever going to touch one another. So now this cell is isolated and must be part of the 24. Now it's got a six in it. So the 24 can't be made in only three cells. So that's that strip is now forced. I'll make those green to be consistent. Uh, oh yeah, and look, this 26, it has exactly the same optionality that this 26 does. The 20, ah, the 27 now can't be a vertical strip. Three cells won't add up to enough. So we can, we can add on Let's make that grey. We can, we've got to add on a, uh, a cell in column 8 to this 27. Now, if it did that, is there anything wrong with that? Maybe, maybe not. Oh, ah, yeah, okay. Here is a sensible question. 
What region gets to this cell? Now, nothing can reach that apart from the 27, I think, because we know it can't be part of the 40, and there isn't a clue over in row 5. So to get a rectangle in here, you either have to come to drop into it, come up from below it, or come horizontally into it, and that, not, nothing works apart from grey. So grey goes into those cells. Um, now, let me just think about this for a second or two. Grey goes into those squares. I'm wondering if I can... I was actually wondering about whether I could extend this 27 all the way to the 7 here. Because this 7 here is not that straightforward to reach for any of the clues in the grid. The 37 can't reach it. That's not that's a 10 cell region. The 38 can reach it, but if, if the 20, no, the 27 can't reach it because then the other digit that was missing from the 27 cage would have to be an 18 to take us to 45. So those are part of the same region as well, I think. This 24 can't reach the 7 because it would clash with the, the little 7 region that we found at the start. So though that's all some sort of region. Um, now I've got to pick a good colour for this, maybe orange. Uh, that's looking very, very mightily big. Hang on, what's 26? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here's a bit more logic. Let's keep going with the secret <laughs> because let's think about columns 8 and 9. Now what do columns 8 and 9, what do the digits in column 8 and 9 add up to? Well they add up to 45 times 2 which is 90. So if this 26 is a 2 by 2 region you've then got regions already sort of hypothecated for columns 8 and 9 adding up to 40 plus 27 plus 26. Now that's definitely more than 90 already before we even get to these cells. That won't work so this grey region must take those squares and allow this 26 region to come out, which three cells is not enough, so it's got to keep going. The 38 region, um, can that, is there anything wrong with it growing to be bigger? I don't know, but the, th ah, the 37 region now can't be, yeah, it can't just be a, a vertical strip of one cell width because it would only reach, it could only be of size 4, and that's not going to be enough to get to 37. So that's forced. These two cells now, uh, they could be part of the 18 maybe. Although, no, ah, no, hang on, sorry, I'm wrong. The 37, yeah, it, we can't make it add up to enough if it just sits at size 4. Even if we did 8, 9, 8, 9, it would only add up to 34. So it's got to grow, and it can't grow this way because it would interfere with the 8. So it definitely takes those two cells, which limits the 18 horizontally slightly. These are the, So these two squares here are either red or orange because nothing else can reach them and retain its rectangularness. Um, so now... What does that mean? That's the next question. I think everything's getting quite difficult here, actually. The 41 now must come vertically to some extent because I can't make those five cells add to 40, 41. So that's forced as a, a sort of a start. Is that penning the 24? What, what, what does the 8 connect to? Yeah, what does the 8 connect to? It must connect to the 24 because it can't connect to anything else. The 8 can't get to that 41 without interfering with the 24 and no other clue can reach it and retain and <laughs> stay a rectangle. So though those three digits there are in the same region. I'll make those grey again. But... Can this do that... Or even that field. No, that's too many. It can't, definitely can't do that. Ah, yes, okay. 
Oh, no, but it could just take this on its own. Sorry, I'm getting confused now. I've got to be a bit careful. I think there is some... There's opportunity to make logical... Well, false logical deductions here. Um, hmm. Okay, let's ask about the 9 then. What's the 9 party to? Because if that 9 is not part of the 41, because that would be a 10-cell region... And it's not part of the 24. <laughs> right, okay. And it's not part of the 18. Because if it did join the 18, these five cells would have to add up to nine. And that's impossible. Five different digits, if, if they all have to be different, and they do because they would be in the same region, can add up to a minimum of 15. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So... That seems important. Then this 9, I think, can only get to the 38. And that looks very... Well, that's causing quite a lot of congestion, isn't it? So this, this region here... Right, OK, so now I can place 7 in row 4 out of nowhere. Because this 8-cell region is missing a 7. Because... If it was a 9-cell region, it would add to 45. It's an 8-cell region, so it's missing the digit that's 45 minus 38. It's missing the 7. So there's no 7 in those cells. There's no 7 here. There's no 7 here. You can't repeat 7 in the yellow region, so that's a 7. Oh, ah, no, oh, yes. Okay, now, that is a 7, but that also, rather beautifully, tells us, um, tells us that this is not orange, because if this was orange it would be in the same region as itself. So that forces that. So this is now red, this is orange. I don't like the colours I've got here at all. I'm going to change this one, I think, to green. It's a bit harder for me to see what's going on when this is orange against a red. Um, so, okay. So now, so this 38 cannot take this square. Oh, but the 41 could perhaps get this square. Or the 24. Um, hold on a minute, let me just think about this for a second. Or we might be able to do some geometry look on the final four columns. Yeah, in fact, let, let's let's return to the geometry we did on the final two columns because we were looking at this. We know those 18 cells sum up to 90 and I know those 14 cells sum to 67. So these cells at the bottom sum up to 23. Which means the, the rump, if you like, of this and any extension along here has got to sum up to 27. But I can all I can repeat that trick and work out what these squares add up to, can't I? Just you looking at column six and column seven, I've got 37, 38, so that's 75. Ah, so these only add up to 15. And I okay, well this is this is perfect. It's actually very clever. These add so these add to 15. These add it to 23, and those two, therefore, and I say two deliberately, those two have to add up to 12, because I know that these, that this, these two digits here and any extension of the 26 and 24 region have to sum to 27. Well, given that they, can, they only add up to 15, that means I need cells summing to, I need more cells that sum to 12. I can't do that in one cell. So this green region is going to have to take both of those cells. Now it would be very useful to conclude that they were a 7-9 pair because, well, obviously a 24 clue could just be a stripe like that with 8-7-9 in it. And actually that would be really useful given that that domino adds up to 12 because if that's 7-9, this would have to be 8-4. Uh, hang on a minute, let me think about this a bit more. Can I do something more with the 41 region? Oh, the 40, yeah, hang on, the 41. Yeah, 
Let's think about the absolute size. How many cells are in this 41 region? Well, we, we know it's missing cells or digits that sum up to 45 minus 41, i.e. cells or digits that add up to 4. Now, the maximum number of digits I can make up add up to 4 is 2. I can, use a, I can miss a 1 and a 3 out of this region. But that would require this region to have 7 cells. 7 is prime, and therefore that would have to be a strip. It could never be a rectangle. And it can't be a strip because it's going to interfere with a 38. So this has to have 8 cells in it, and it has to be, therefore, a 2 by 4 rectangle. And the only way of doing that is like that. That is very, very beautiful setting. I'm going to change that down there to orange, I think, just to keep my colours as diverse as possible. So now this 23, yeah, the 23 is forced. Given every cell is tiled and we've got to keep things as rectangles, that's forced. Now what's in here? Oh, okay. And now this strip actually, so oh, this is, bother, this isn't 879 because these have to find a home and their, their only home is going to be in grey. And in fact, we can now we now know what these five digits add up to. And we know that by maths, because 24 minus 8 is 16. So these five cells add up to 16. The only way of doing that is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. And 1 and 6 are not in those squares. Oh, this is so clever. So that's a 1, 6 pair is what I'm alleging in, in the grey region. So there's a 1 and a 6 in the red region at the top. Um, oh, we know this is missing. Ah, ah, I'm about to show you something that's really rather beautiful, I think. Let's look at this region. It's missing an 8 because it adds up to 37 and it's 8 cells large. Well, that means I've got to put two 8s into these uh, 10 cells. Why two eights? Well, I know that there's an eight somewhere in column six. I know there's an eight somewhere in column seven. Well, that region is all part of a region. It can take one eight. That means these squares must have an eight in them. But we know those squares added up to 15 um, from the maths on these two columns. And yeah, 37 plus 38 is 75. So the two columns together add up to 90. These do add up to uh, 15. Once one of them is an eight, the others have got to be one, two, four. Oh, actually, is that right? I'm just pausing there. I was about to say the others have to be one, two, four in order to make seven, but that assumes that this is these all have to be different from each other. Let me just think about that for a sec. Is that actually force? It's certainly true to say there is an eight in one of these four cells. But what would be the problem with something like that and then an 8 and a 3? The answer, well, I mean, obviously that doesn't work with the 2 here, but uh, we, could, we could do that instead perhaps with, uh, we can't repeat 1. You might be able to repeat 3. Yeah, something like that and then a 1-8 pair like that. What's wrong with that? The answer is I don't know. Okay, so so my my clever idea is actually far less clever than I thought it was. Sorry. Um, so we're going to have to think about that. We know that the remaining four cells there add up to seven. But until we can lock... Until we can stop there being a repeated digit in this foursome... We've still got some thinking to do. So let us do some more thinking. 4 in box 7 has to be vertical because it can't be in the 41 cage. Um, we've still got a bit of real estate in the top left to figure out the colouring on. 18. Uh, <laughs> oh no, now we're getting stuck. Um, Okay, what can we do that's going to help us to get unstuck with some sort of a plum here? What about this row? This Again, this row adds up to 45, so these four squares add up to 21. 
not four squares, these three squares add up to 21. I've got fours on the brain. Um, 21 without using a six, so they must include a nine, which means nine in this box has to be vert in this domino here. Which means nine up ah nine has got to be in one of two places in box two because it can't overlap with an eight clue. Um, seven. Oh yeah, okay, that's a nice thought. Where does seven go in this box? And seven is going to have to go in this domino. Now this domino added up to twelve from the maths we did on these regions earlier. So if there's a seven in it, that's a five, seven pair. So surely this is very difficult now to get to 21 in any meaningful way, given we can't use five, six or seven in the sum. Yes, that has to be four, eight and nine. And we know the four is in this, yeah, can't be in the yellow, so we can do this. That's got to be a four in the corner. Four comes out of these cells. Eight comes out of those cells, so there's definitely an eight in this domino now. And these squares have got to be selected from ones, twos, and threes, and that is not a one. Now I've got a two, three, four triple here, I see. So now I've got an eight, nine pair there in box eight. And we can't put nine in here, because we know there's an eight in here. So if we put nine here, that would be an eight, and these would add up to more than 15. So that's eight. That's nine. I still don't think I can rule out a repeated digit into those two squares. The repeated digit could not be a two, so it would have to be a double three. What's wrong with that? Ah, if that's a three, those two squares have to add up to 15, and there's no valid way of doing it because 3 plus 8 is 11, 15 here is either 7, 8 or 6, 9, doesn't work. Okay, so these are all different and I was worrying about nothing. So this square has got to be a 2, that square has got to be a 1 or a 4. Oh, where's the 4 going in this quadruple then? It can only go there, so that's the 4, that's the 1, this is a 3 and we are off to the races. 12, well 26 minus 12 is 14, without using an 8 is a 5, 9 pair. These squares have got to be uh, 2, 7 and 8, which is probably, that's not 7, so 7, look, it's in the same region as a 7. Ah, now look at the green region. It's 6 cells adding up to 38. Well, that's actually forced in terms of its constitution. It's got to be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 and 3. So it's definitely not got a 2 in it. So it's still not got a 2 in it or a 4 in it. So this square here is a 3 or a 5. Um, these squares have got to be 3s, 5s or 6s. And he says, hoping he's going to spot something. That's not a 2. Uh, oh, I see. We could have got that from here. Look. Oh, look, we've got a 4. We've got Sudoku to do. 4 and 3 into the grid. So that's got to be a 2 now to complete this region. That's not a 2. That's not a 2. I keep having to juggle in my head what's missing from all these regions. This one's not got a 7. That one's not got an 8. This one's not got a 4. And that one's not got a 5. Ah. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. Look at uh, this column. The final two columns. How many fives are in the final two columns? Two. And there's none in that one. And there's only one in those six cells. So there's got to be a five in those cells, which means there's no five there, which means that's the only place for a five in the green region. How do you set something like this? It's so ridiculously clever, isn't it? Now, that's a three six pair. Um, there's got to be a 4 in this 27 region. Is there anything else it definitely has to have? It's got to have, it's got a 4, a 5, a 2 and a set up. So it's got 2 times 9 in it, 18. It's got 2 more cells in it that add up to 9 that are not 3, 6, 
four, five, or two, seven. So it's got a one and an eight in it, and there's a one and an eight here. Okay, I don't think that's actually as useful as I was hoping, but I do, I do know the constitution of this two by two. Ah, I've actually no, I maybe maybe I do know more. And that's still got to be one four therefore. So this is five eight. And those squares have got to be two and nine. Which means these squares have got to be one, five, and eight. And presumably Oh uh, no, maybe we can. I'm just well. I'm just. I was hoping I was going to get some of these digits, but maybe I can't. Um, bobbins. <laughs> uh, where is the best place to get an easy win from here? It's probably going to be to figure out the top left of the grid, which I probably should have done ages ago. Let's in fact let's look at that now. What is, what can we say about this? We can say that, ah, okay, I can say something about the eight clue. How could the eight be a vertical stri strip of any length at all? It can't be. It can't be a sort of square with an eight in it. That's gonna break that clue. It can't be a two cell eight clue because one, seven, two, six, and three, five are all impossible. And it can't be a three cell strip because you need a one in it and there's a one already in the column. So this is horizontal in some way. I can use gray for that. So this is a horizontal, but it could be three cells. It could be two cells. Ah, but now this square can only be reached by green. So that gets me another digit. The 26 is not big enough if it's only three cells. So the 26 is forced to be a two by two. Yeah, sorry, we could have probably done this a while ago. This square is unreachable except by gray and the 18 needs three cells. So that's the finishing, uh, that's the finished Shikaku part of the puzzle. Yeah, okay. And now the a three cell sum to eight needs a one in it. Neither of those squares can be a one by Sudoku. So that's a one. Yeah, and this square can't be a three or a four. So this is a two five pair and there's a two here. So that's a two, this is a five, that's a five, that's a seven. Now the top of this column uh, is a seven nine pair. And the top of this column is threes, fours and eights. Which is looking interesting, but maybe Maybe we can't finish this off, or maybe how do we finish this off? Come on, come on, Simon. I feel like I feel like we've sort of broken the back of it. Ah, seven here. Yes, look, I can get a seven and a two, and a two and a nine, and a nine and a five, and a five and an eight. Yes. When in doubt about how to proceed, always check in a Sudoku whether you can use Sudoku. This row needs ones, sixes, and sevens to finish it off. And that's not a six look by Sudoku. And if that's a one, it's broken because that would have to be double nine. So that's a seven. One, six, ah, one, six pair here. Again, Sudoku, Sudoku, Sudoku. These squares are now one, five, and something. A oh, one, three, and five, actually. Okay, one, three, and five, but surely that domino's got to be relatively large, doesn't it? Because we've got 11, yet, yeah, oh, oh, bobbins. Ah, no, it's okay. Yeah, we need this domino to add up to 12 and we can't repeat the seven. So five is impossible here because it'll put a seven in the column again. So that's got to be three, that's got to be nine. The one resolves the one five that we're left with. This square's an eight by Sudoku. The one resolves the one five we've just inherited Five by Sudoku is here. This column needs an eight and a two, and we can see there's a two here. So two and eight go in the grid. Um, what's, what do we have to put in this, this one? Everything apart from seven. So we need to put three, four, and six into it. So the only place a six can go in the 38 cage is now here. 
This, which, oh, that's beautiful. So that gets the six, the three, the four, the three, the four, all resolved out of nowhere. These two squares are a seven and a three, which somehow doesn't seem to be resolved. Um, we've got in the 26 cage at the moment, we've got 13. So we need 13 more without six, seven or five, eight being involved. So that's four and nine. And we may not know which way around that is, but that at least gets us the nine and the eight at the bottom of the grid. This square at the top is a three or a seven. We've got threes, four, oh no, no not fours. Careful with your Sudoku, Simon. Twos, threes and sevens. Oh, okay, two, three and seven there. Two, three and seven here. But uh, two, no, you can't put two in the 18 cage because this would have to be a seven, nine pair. And it, very clearly cannot be. So there's now a 3 7 pair here. That's become a 2. That's a 2 by Sudoku uh, in in box 3. There's four, four twos looking at box 3. Um, now probably we can do this now. Let's look at 3, 4, 6 and 9. So this square has got to be 3 or 6. That square can only be nine of those options, I think. So that's a naked single that's been hiding away in the grid. Nine and four go in. This is a three or a six. It can't be a six because of the six in the corner. So that all gets done. Still don't know what the one four pair's got going on for it. That square's now got to be a something. I realize that's not the most descriptive <laughs> uh, way of describing the contents of this square which is a five I think um, just to complete this column oh come on this must be done <laughs> what are those two squares then they are one and ah three goodness sake Simon one and... oh it's not done though one and three sorry let me just get rid of that corner pencil mark this, yeah, that box has no repeated digits and is missing an 8. So that looks correct, doesn't it? Um, okay, well, let's do this column then. 1s, 4s and 6s. So the only place for 6 in the column is here. This has got to be a 1 or a 4. And this column needs 1, 4 and 8. Oh dear, this is, this is worrying me now. Because it feels like there must be something that we've, or I've, let's be honest about it, that I've missed about this. Because everything now should be resolved. Oh, is it the 18? Maybe the 18. Oh, it'll be the, no. Okay, it'll either be the 18 or the 28. I forgot I've got some horizontal um, cages that are probably going to resolve everything. So if that's a 3, ah, 3, 7, 8 would work. If that's a 7... 4, 7 would work. Oh no, you can't repeat the 7. That's it. That's it. If that's a 7, there's no way of making 11 without repeating the 7. So that's a 3. That's an 8. That's a 7. And therefore that's a 4 and that's a 9 and that's a 1 and that's a 1 and that's a 3 and that's a 4 and that's a 1 and that's a 4 and that's an 8 and that's a 7 and that's a 7 and that's a 3. What a Beautiful puzzle. Absolutely brilliant, Shy. As always, and thanks very much, Codec, for sharing your Christmas present with us. That is an, well, that's about as good a re-gifting as you can get, isn't it? To take something that's given him a lot of pleasure and send it out into the world where it can give us just that same pleasure again. Fantastic. Um, it sort of feels like making a perpetual motion machine or something out of, you know, it, it, the energy just never departs from the system. Absolutely brilliant. Um, let me know how you got on in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.